Kate and I wanted to share with you how we create our gift box collections. This started a few years back when we didn't have the baskets we needed for creating a gift basket. And I thought, well, we could just use trays made out of cardboard boxes and make them pretty. And then you don't invest a lot of money in your container. And it's very simple. You can come up with any size box you need to create the basket that you want to do. So this is a completed one. I just thought I'd let you see um, a sample so you see how the box just holds everything together. So to put this together, you're going to start with any cardboard box that's suitable for the quantity of materials that you want to use. I typically will pull it out and kind of just drop the things I'm going to use into it to see how it's going to fit and then go up or down in size on the box. So to start with, you're just going to take a box that's been taped shut and we'll just slice the flaps off of it till we get it down to a tray. Using a box cutter with a very sharp blade is a great way to do this, but you could also use a pair of um, heavy scissors uh, that would cut cardboard well. The tray is ready to use in this um, with all of its sides the same height, but I also like to take these and cut them down like this to where you have a taller back to it or possibly even just a corner. We do that just by starting here and taking this down to the front side of the box. Where now it's low in the front and your um, items that you put in the box will show off better and yet you still have the support of the back here. And this is one more example of another box. It's a lot deeper. This is great for holding taller things that might be a little bit top heavy. Um, you can see in some of our videos of how to create the basket with the items how this kind of uh, effect works. So to cover this you can use any kind of paper you want. We use craft paper for our demo there and I've chosen a pretty piece of uh, lavender printed wrapping paper for this. And these don't really need to be fancy so you could even recycle your old wrapping paper to do this because when all said and done not a lot of the box shows. So you're just going to fit the paper to this to where it'll go down inside the box. And we're just going to cut that down. You could use the whole thing, but it's just like wrapping a package. If you have a lot of extra paper, it gets a little cumbersome to fold it into the box. My next step, I like to use strapping tape because it's just easy, it sticks really well. And I just take a few little tabs and get them ready to go. So just cutting some short pieces off. We'll do four of those, one for each side. And then starting with the front of the box, you're just going to fold your paper in like so. And then tape it down on the inside. And then pull this back just the way you would wrap a package on both sides. And truly, um, <laughs> I tend to be a perfectionist, um, but you don't want to do that with these. It's never going to be perfect and it really doesn't need to be. The paper isn't going to fold great, especially when you're doing these slanted sides because it's not going to wrap the way a normal box would. So we can take both of those sides over like so, tape them down on the inside. You can use scotch tape for this as well. It's just that the strapping tape sticks easier and so I go that direction. And then we're going to fold these two in on the back, like so. And then we can just fold that over and bring that to the inside of the box. And it's ready to go. And as I said, truly, you can see I didn't get too fancy with how I put that paper on there. Um, but you can be as neat and tidy as you want to. So this box then is ready to go. When you're going to, I've done a few other samples for you to see here. One that's kind of fun is I like to use just a plain solid kind of wrapping paper and you can use our um, floral paint to do this with and you're just going to shake it up a little bit. If you depress the nozzle just slightly, it's going to start fitting. And so you can then do this on your box and get some nice little kind of polka dots on it. This is a great way, metallics are a lot of fun to do this with your gold, silver and copper on your papers. Again, remembering whatever the paper color is, it's going to show through a little bit. So you kind of want combinations that work well. So you end up with this. We've got another pretty wrap similar to this one. I did this one with some masculine 
um, kind of hunting paper uh, box here that we've taken and used just some of those inexpensive little stickers to decorate. You could do some really fun things with this um, for children's uh, gifts and also it would be a great way for kids to get to decorate boxes uh, to do their own gift boxes with. And then here's another one done with just a pretty ribbon wrapped around the box and then this is where you can clean up all those little scraps from your silk flowers that you have. You can just glue those into the center of it to fill those in. So then as you put your gift box together, you're also going to need something to fill the inside with. And cellophane's always kind of fun. It's not my first choice always because it can kind of get um, crinkly, but it, it can be very effective and glittery and pretty in a container. So that's an option. I like clear cellophane real well just because it doesn't say anything and it doesn't make the box busy but it gives it that um, kind of gifty feel that you see with gift baskets. Tissue paper works. It's my least favorite because it crunches down so much so if the box is going to travel anywhere um, with somebody it gets kind of gnarly on the edges. So, But sometimes it's a great fill to just stuff the box with and then uh, you can use pieces of styrofoam. I just look for inexpensive packing foam you can use. You can buy styrofoam for it. You can use little boxes if you had old books you didn't care about. You could anything you can use to raise it up. And so then you can make these into little pieces that will stack and fill in so you can raise the materials um, that you're putting in the box up with that. And then, of course, we have some real pretty glitter. And this is a neat netting. And you can take it and just knot it in the center. So we'll take a piece like this. You want to finish the edge somehow. It might be a little hard to see there that it's kind of scalloped. To do this, you're going to take and cut a piece of netting, whatever length you need, and fold it back and forth like so. So I folded it in half. We'll fold it in half again. And we'll do that one more time. You can even go this far if you want. It just depends on how big you want the points or the scallops. So you're either going to round it like so to make the scallops or you're going to cut it at an angle like that to make points like I have on the other end and then it takes care and points all the little tips. So we can then take and tie that in a just a loose knot and spread those out. You can do this with netting, with tool. Um, these are really nice because it's got good sizing in it so it kind of stands up really well and you've got some really fun little additions to add the sparkle to your design with, with that. And then probably one of my favorites of the moment is the, the honey cut or die cut um, paper that stretches and you can tear it into any shape you want. You get it in packing, it's really inexpensive and it's so organic looking and it fits with all of your craft papers and natural materials and you can use this to kind of stuff your box with. So with those little tricks you're ready to go and Please join us for our next video where we show you how to create the gift box. Thanks for joining us. Fabulous.